Thank you, David. Um, so um, I'm going to be talking about the different things that we're doing at uh, ETRI in within ETRIX and Imperial College Data Science Institute around translation informatics and Transmart. Uh, apologies by uh, by Professor Guo, the CTO of the foundation, who was supposed to be here giving the talk in front of me, but I just got a tweet that. He's just met with the president of China, who visited the the institute. So that had to be, he had to be there for that. So I hope. I know, I know, I know. I didn't believe it until I just saw the Twitter. So um, I didn't have time just to put it on here, just to prove it. So we'll get right through it because I know that David is uh, anxious to to make up some time. So the Data Science Institute. It's um we've founded last year. The, the mission is to, to catalyze uh, multidisciplinary research within the college, building, building up the data science capacity, a lot of education, so we're tied into a lot of the MSc courses and teaching modules on data science for the different fields, um, collaborating obviously with international partners and hence why we're here today, and translating innovation into value if you like some business speak as well. Um, the organization is we have a, a research board which is uh, comprised of our top professors at the college and we have a, a biomedical informatics lab and life science actually which I'm, I'm the head of and an analytics lab and there's a lot of overlap between the both uh, both fields so we're in so we look a lot into data man big data management statistical computing visualizations modeling machine learning cloud computing etc so Let's get into eTrix, a very, very short introduction. Um, I hope that some, the, the majority of you in this room have already heard about the project. So it was, um, it's an IMI project, Innovative Measurement Initiatives, uh, public-private partnership. And um, these are the, um, the members of the consortium, so Imperial um, Managing Entity, AstraZeneca Previous coordinator, actually Jay from Pfizer, is the acting coordinator at the, at the moment, and you can see a lot of the pharma companies and, and Reinhardt's group and the CNRS here from academic side. So the the whole the idea behind uh, Etrix was to build an open, sustainable platform to be able to support the the different IMI projects, and um, so the first choice to do that was to use Transmart and we've built upon uh, Transmart um, to do the support. At the moment, we are, um, we are hosting a number of, uh, of projects and um, supporting them. And the ultimate goal is uh, from the, from the, from the, of the consortium is 40 supported projects. Don't confuse it with any religious 40 virgins and all that. It's 40 projects. Um, so I'm not going to say, I'm not going to get too much into the actual um, projects that we're supporting. But I would like to invite you all to our community meeting tomorrow, which is open here at the, it's at the World Trade Center. And um, you sh you'll find the information both on the Transmart Foundation website and the Etrix, where all of the, um, the projects, the supported projects will be there. And we'll be showcasing all of the, the work we do for them. Plus, we're going to be launching um, some interesting new insights in some of the research we're, we're, um, we're doing. And you can access uh, how you can get access to that as well in an early version. So Etrix and Transmart. So I'm going to just go over the, some of the positional statements that uh, Professor Guo made at the recent um, UU Informatics Alignments workshop that we had in, at Imperial College back in April. So basically, he, he was like to propose a uh, Transmart as a service. Don't worry, it's no new notions. Everything that we've been discussing, you'll figure out that it fits into this model. So we've, at the moment, we've got uh, many projects to support, probably two, um, 18 at the moment. Uh, Chris, uh, are we 18? I think so. 18. <laughs> and uh, it's obviously many studies involved in these, um, a lot of companies, and one data warehouse. And one of the quotes that you can find all over the internet is that 95% of the data warehouse projects fails because everyone wants to make it uh, the data warehouse into everything. Sound sound familiar to anyone? So um, it's it's um, data should be integrated. A warehouse should not be it should be decomposed. And uh, and basically the the take home messages here is that there's a strong um, notion of what is core. You need to keep a small core functioning system and build out plug in architecture around that. 
So this is the um, this is the idea of um, of how the, the 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 architecture should look. So pretty much what you've heard, we're putting etrix on it, but you can also just see that how it fits into Transmart. I've made I2 beta in red, so just to avoid any discuss any any difficult discussions, but we we can. Discuss <laughs> We can tackle that if we want. So we're building a data harmonization system, a big data storage, analytical engine, and also a plug-in mart, obviously through the collaborations with the Transmart Foundation, and just some, some of the available plugins, uh, obviously, and some of the work we've been doing with IBM, uh, Galaxy plugin, which is developed and is used, um, an XNAP plugin, Cytoscape and Index. So we'll go into a few of the details. So firstly, we'd, we'll go into some um, federation layer. It wasn't it wasn't presented in the in the previous architecture slide, but it's the dri the driven the driver behind this is that we've seen that a quite a few of our projects are not allowed to to share the clinical data because of um, restrictions, um, legal restrictions in the geographic policies, and um, the countries. So the idea is that what we've what we've already um, got a prototype function in is that you could set up multiple transmarts and and um, you can federate the clinical data and you can see so with well, a minute if it, if it's federated you put a configuration file you point to the different transmarts if it is federated it will go to the local storage and the remote instances and build an, an updated ontology tree the minute you try and enter any of the studies if you don't have access it will ask you to reauthenticate and make sure that you do have access to that to the study that you're trying to see so this is a graphical representation here so um, there's a symbol showing if it's uh, so no symbol is stored locally a red symbol is you it's there but you don't have access um, and a green one is that you have access to the to the studies and the idea is that once you can um, once you've identified the clinical data you can then contact the um, the study owner and request access um, and this is this was just uh, posted um, shown on the poster presented as well how the flow is and we've got an encryption um, a layer input in here, so so you can make sure that no none of the data which has been sent across is intercepted and can be decrypted. So this is this was one of the posters, and um, if you follow the Transmart Foundation Twitter um, feed, all of the posters that we presented are available. Um, so then the the harmonization system. So this is a, a, a project chiefly driven by uh, by Ibrahim Imam, and the idea is to be able to have a layer on top of it, so very much, very cognizant to what Mariska was uh, just describing as well, um, very very similar, uh, where you would essentially connect to any data source and uh, use the data harmonization pipelines to be able to to uh, to end up with a semantically tagged data set. So the idea at the moment. This is being used in one of the in one of the supported projects called BioVacSafe for cohort uh, for cohort identification before entry into Transmart because they would they had this the classical need I've I've profiled only a hundred out of my 500 patients I want to see which patients are worthy of uh, further profiling so I can order the tests in the lab um, the 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 good thing this. What, what's not shown here and is um, shown on the on this slide is that this is all of the we're trying to um, load all of the clinical data into a CDIS format, and the and the um, omics data will follow an ISOTAB standard. CDISC is a is one of our partners on our project, and of course we we intend to extend the um, the vocabularies wherever they're not um, available, where the CDIS domain don't cover it. So the idea is that when you've, um, if you've got a study design here, it will automatically create the templates, like um, Mariska was describing before as well, um, for the study, and allow the data curators or the data owners to insert everything into it into a configurable um, template. When once it's loaded in, it will go through this metadata registry um, layer, which which will then um, harmonize it across all and, and end up in the same uh, vocabulary which then you can inject directly into Transmart. So at the moment, we've already developed the, the BioSpeak part, the front end, and we're, at the moment, we're actively developing the, um, the metadata registry. So um, going on, the analytical engine that we're building. So you've heard already in this meeting a lot about Spark Hadoop. So one of the things that we're, we're building in, um, 
in the in the Etrix project is is this uh, analytical engine which can be used uh, for for Transmart. Essentially, it's agnostic. It doesn't have to be coupled with Transmart. It can ingest any data, clinical or omics, and do. And the idea, the driver behind this is that you some of the workflows that you're going to run do need an HPC-like environment. You don't want to offload it onto the server because you're going to be killing, I don't know, I heard about the training session yesterday where some of the servers were, were, were crashing. It's one of the things that we want to avoid completely in the future. So they're ma mainly data, data intensive and computation intensive workflows that we're, we're, that we're building. And again, if you're interested, please come along to the eTrix meeting tomorrow and um, find out more about it. So this was Excel's project, and one of the workflows, for example, that we've uh, we've implemented already in in the analytical engine is a five-fold cross-validation uh, workflow for identification of a minimal model for gene expression data, RNA expression, or any kind of uh, expression data sets. Um, and another one, which is um, which was used um, in collaboration with the, with Intel with their um, with their toolkit that they're developing, Trusted Analytics, is the label propagation um, workflow for GWAS data, where essentially you were able to just point out one case and control, and then it will scan through the data set and separate and predict your um, your cases and controls based on genetic data. And this was also shown on the um, on the poster, and it's available online. So. Let's go into now uh, one of the other big asks, uh, medical imaging. So a lot of the a lot of people are identifying that we need to support images as well. So what we've already we've created a, an XNAT plugin for Transmart, and essentially the idea and this is how it's been used in a, an NMRC project called Optimize on multiple sclerosis, trying to identify to find new biomarkers for the for the diagnosis of um, of um, MS. Uh, and after after a interventional trial with the Sabri, so what how the, the idea is how this sits and this is a plugin which is going to be available with 1.2.5 um, is that you have you keep your XNAT and each and Transmart um, servers separate you don't want to mix them up and you keep you you maintain all of your DICOM ready MRI images seen data and other data and all of the analysis in the XNAT server where it sits very nicely and it's programmed exactly to do so and then you connect you uh, you send all of the uh, the metadata and that you've derived into Transmart and you can use them as phenotypical data for subset uh, subsetting purposes so you can answer questions like show me all the patients which have had a a lesion progression of less than X amount in the past two months, um, and the the, the plugin architecture, the plugging of the um, of the um, the architecture of the plugging is exactly like this. So it's, it sends JSON files in and out of Transmart, and you can see all of the well, the grid view will hold the images, the links back to the XNAT images, where you are able to pop them up so the clinician can view the images while looking through the patients. Um, the uh, big data storage. So um, we've presented this a few times. We've uh, we've published on it as well, and you can you can find that we've developed an, an alternative backend. Again, it's on a plugin module, so you don't have to use the um, the HBase architecture. But the reason we created it is to be able to hold all of the omics data. So we created a genetic a generic data model which can hold in a key value um, schema with HBase to be able to, to load all the omics data. And we've shown that um, over against um, other, other configurations of uh, even clusters, it, output for, it outperforms both, both in uh, retrieval. And um, this, is, this is all the, pay, the data which is on, on the poster again. And you can, um, and you can, and you can find all of the, the information. So the the idea of how this is going, how this um, how this plugin works, is that you come as after you've sent up your vanilla 1.2.5, and normally you've gone through the um, the configuration. You install HBase on the same server or a separate server, and you just change the configuration file in pointing Transmart to look at HBase for the for your omics, and you still look at for the clinical information in um, in um, the RDBMS. The the loaders will be it will be um, given with the uh, with the plugin for this. So uh, this is uh, this is going to be available in 1.2.3 anyway. 
So, and uh, uh, finally, in terms of the development work, I just um, maybe some of you saw some of the work that we've been doing with IBM on porting Transmart to uh, the Power 8 system and Elastic Storage. And here, um, it's uh, it's one of the work uh, one of the workflows that we've um, started design, which was showcased last meeting in Boston, where we've uh, we've been using the the Watson cognitive um, capabilities to do a literate uh, well. Cognitive probably is a word, long word, but literature enrichment analysis by you're able to, to parse into millions and millions and millions of PubMed records. So the minute you run your workflow and you look at your results in the in the context of um, of a mil of uh, all of the curated literature, then you can change the literature sources. So if you're not comfortable with uh, with whatever it's been indexed, you can change and we can and it can be indexed. But that's on the IBM Watson side. Um, so. Just a few um, cases about how we've been using the platform. I've I heard um, some probably valid comments about Transmart being used as a, as a um, proof of concept and not really in production. Well, we kind of got it in production from 1.1, and we've we pain we we went through the pains of uh, supporting it through 1.2 because we had some projects which really needed it, needed to use it live. It wasn't easy, but uh, we managed to do it. So, you buy a pred is a project on severe asthma where they uh, where they're trying to generate assistance biology handprint by uh, by integrating all the different omics modalities with clinical characteristics. So the flow of it, and you've probably heard this before. If not, again, we've um, this, this, we've published all, all on this. Um, essentially, after patient recruitment and sample collection, everything is there, all the samples are um, sent to the biobank. Um, the omics uh, data are acquired using the using the different platforms we're using, and then essentially we're using Transmart to do all of the omics integration and all of the analyses. And this is what we won. Uh, the 2014 BioTO um, Best Practices Award for. This is a, this is um, just a snapshot of the data content about six months ago. That it's it's now to uh, it's now to exploding, um, and it's the project's coming to a wrap up. So these are just to, just to, to show you the the different types of data we've uh, been including. So multiple tissue um, gene expression data set, protein abundance using um, unbiased and biased methods. Um, lipid abundance using again unbiased and biased methods using mass spec and targeted platforms. We're using the Enos uh, platform, which is in collaboration with Philips and um, and the uh, University of Amsterdam, who's the, uh, developing this. And um, we also got a very large amount of clinical and phenotypic data coming in. If anyone is interested in learning a bit more about the content and everything, please come and see me after the talk because I don't want to take up too too long. So um, this was just some statements that uh, how my, the from some of the professors in the um, in this in the consortium about how how well the tricks and Transmart platforms have uh, have um, served them, and this is further demonstrated by two of the recent papers that have come out in ERS, uh, the European Respiratory Journal, um, just in the, the beginning of this month. They both uh, quote. Uh, they both reference Transmart. They both acknowledge e tricks and you're welcome to to go and see the the publications. On top of that, even uh, some nice publication for the foundation, even more. So that after the public, these two publications back to back, Lancet Respiratory Medicine wrote about the whole um, the new identity for asthma, and it's specifically to, um, talking about how all of this was done using Transmart tool, uh, highlighting our work. So we we're pleased to see that. Um, on the on the other part of of the of the collaboration so, um, and the projects we supported, so Julie and uh, Tatiana have talked about the, the the data they curated for the for GSK on the Eclipse study. This is on COPD, so you can see the link between you can imagine the link between asthma, and one of the and one of the senior postdocs in our group, Kai, um, ran a, a complete reanalysis using of the data sets we're using Transmart from the data loaded by Rancho, and was able to show that the essentially the results coming out from the Transmart analysis and the papers published were pretty much identical. So at least it was a validity that it could be used uh, it could be used properly. Um, and so I, wanna, I don't want to bore you anymore. Um, so I'm just going to finish up by talking about the new project which we're embarking on. So the Transmart we're setting up for Genomics England, or the thousand, um, the ten thousand, a hundred thousand medical genomes, or whatever you want to call it these days. 
So I'm just going to show you what what we've been um, what we've been uh, what we're building for them in terms of Transmart. So just a little bit of uh, background. The GMCs are the genetic um, uh, genetic medicine um, groups and councils, and and um, they're develop it, They're using Open Clinica to insert all the all the data across the NHS in the UK, and um, they're, they're inserting all of the data and the GMCs and the omics data into LabKey software. We can we can go into some details if you want offline. If and you can, I can answer some questions why or not. But and and essentially what what we're doing here we're we're trying to impose the the gel data domain domain specific data model so research specific. Um, and if it's in cardiology, if it's in cancer, we want to perpetuate the the, the data model from from Open Clinica and di and directly load it in, have it represented in Transmart in the same way. The reason they're using Transmart is to provide the pharmaceutical companies who are partners in Genomics England the um, the opportunity to uh, to interrogate the gate data. And I'm and I know that also one of the other tools which is which they're also considering they're also looking in, in next bio. I'm not sure if if it's been chosen uh, next bio clinica or not. But at least I, I think they're trying to do multiple ones, so it will be interesting to see how the collaboration works. And we're building this on top of um, of HBase for them, so we're basically doing the plug-in ar architecture from LabKey directly into Transmart, and we're also um, building their own um, HBase version of um, of Transmart. And with that, I'd like to thank you and hope I didn't I made up a bit of time. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. So, questions for Yanis? Uh, you've mentioned for that for the GSK study, one of the postdocs from your uh, group has reanalyzed the data in Transmart and she got the identical results to the one that were published? Nearly identical. Nearly identical. Okay. So the ones that were published, what methods were used there for analysis? Sorry? The published results, what methods were used there for analysis? Multiple. Multiple methods. Okay. And uh, the UBA prod uh, data that was analyzed in Transmart, was that analysis verified by any other methods or whatever they got in Transmart, yes. they published? Yeah. No. Uh, the Transmart, as we've always been uh, positioned in Transmart as a hypothesis generator and we've always encouraged sound scientific principles by, by validating them in, in second. Uh, uh, Transmart, in our view, shouldn't be used to publish. It should be used to to generate the hypotheses by which you and and refine the hypotheses, which you then send to your biostatistician, your bioinformatician, who checks all of the details, and and make, and make sure that all the methods are used uh, proper. Okay, thank you. That's what I tell people when they ask me about Transmart. I usually tell, don't bet your R&D budget on it. Just generate some hypotheses. Exactly. Hi, um, I had a question about the data harmonization. So you mentioned that you're using a, a CDISCs, the data model, so SDTM, I presume. Um, could you comment a little bit on the experience using that, or whether or not Etrix has considered other alternatives for harmonization? Why did you choose SDTM? So one of the reasons is that um, it was one of the, and I actually forgot to mention the other part. So um, one of the reasons is that that's what IMI has um, wants us to put forward. Essentially, they would like every project's data in a CDIS compliant format at the end. So if it's going to be used for, for example, for submission, it's already in a in a sample. So we have all, we have looked at alternatives as well, and some in some cases there's no there's no way to avoid alternatives because the uh, CDIS um, doesn't have doesn't cover the disease domain, for example. Um, but where where there is um, where there is um, a possibility, but there's not a complete overlap. We then collaborate with CDIS to extend the ontology. Uh, um, and what I did mention is that um, the, the Atrix, uh, some really nice work that happened in Atrix as well, is that they took all of the Ubiopred um, study as well and they've converted it into a CDIS ready sort of format. And that was um, a collaboration between our group and CDISC. And I should mention that the group is also considering using SDTM, so the CDIS format 
this internal data and also for people using our software because of the same reason, because it's turning out to be a very good lingua franca and, and it has those clear rules for expanding exactly. these areas. Thank you, Yanis.